Welcome to our worship for Maundy Thursday, the day when Jesus washed his disciples' feet and ate his last supper with his friends, before going out to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. The Collect for Maundy Thursday God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, you are going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. 
Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lent is all about self-examination, and we usually talk about examining our hearts, our faith, our walk with God. But today, Maundy Thursday, in the midst of the drama of the Holy Week story, we examine our feet. Feet are quite personal. They're not particularly pretty body parts, but they are pragmatic and useful. They get us from A to B. They carry the weight of the rest of us. They are always needed and used. But feet are rarely something we are proud of. Instead, the idea of someone else paying close attention to our toes might bring embarrassment, alarm, or at least the urge to carefully wash them first. But it is crucial that they are looked after. Anyone who's undertaken an extended hike or a long pilgrimage or climbed a mountain knows that looking after your feet is vital. Because if your feet break down, you are really stuck. Feet also carry their own social rules and expectations of polite behaviour. If we visit someone else's house, we are concerned to take off our shoes to make sure we don't dirty their floor. We wouldn't put our feet up on their table. For Jesus and the disciples, it was polite to have their dusty feet washed, to make sure that both the people and the room they were in were kept clean. It's like housekeeping. Feet have to be properly dealt with. But at the same time, there's this tension in the Gospel reading, because feet are not very presentable. So when Jesus starts, getting very up close and personal, washing the disciples' feet, there's an air, an atmosphere of uncomfortable surprise. And for a minute, as we sit with that sense of uncomfortableness, I want us to compare our feet with our private sense of who we are deep down, our real self, The one we know is capable of being incredibly selfish, petty and mean. All these private and personal things about ourselves that we keep tucked away, these are like our feet, because they are things about ourselves that we would rather keep private, things that we don't think are lovable. Our deepest selves are often not that pretty, We prefer to only let people see our presentable selves, the parts of ourselves that we feel okay with making public. Just as we're careful to be polite with foot etiquette, we feel like we need to present a polite self to everyone around us. And how often do we worry that if others really know everything about ourselves, they might not like us anymore? So... 
Our society and our relationships have unspoken rules about how open and honest we can be about ourselves. We only share our deepest secrets with a few, or one, or none. It's why it can be so scary to truly open up to someone else. It's what makes relationships vulnerable, and it's what can frighten us about them as well. But it is this vulnerability that Jesus quietly touches and accepts without question. Our nervous, embarrassed knowledge of all our darknesses and shortcomings, all these things Jesus takes carefully and simply in his hands, just as gently as he washed his disciples' feet. This shows us who Jesus is and how the love he offers is bigger than we can really understand. Jesus sees it all, all of who we are, all of what we hide, and simply accepts it. Jesus never ever pulls back from the broken, the ugly, the very real and unpleasant. He takes it all, mingled up in the reality of what it is to be a human being. And by doing this, Jesus makes us whole. So I want to suggest that when Jesus washes the disciples' feet, he's cutting through everything, all their attempts to appear respectable, to appear okay, all the worry about keeping up a respectable image. In taking their feet in his hands, grubby, smelly and sweaty, Jesus is asking them to be vulnerable. It's as if Jesus is taking their souls as well as their feet and saying, it's okay, let me in, let me make you clean. It's quite beautiful. There is nothing about us that is too bad, too ugly or too private for Jesus. It's a love we struggle to accept but in washing some grubby feet, Jesus showed us that everything about who we are is okay to share with God. We are seen wholly, accepted wholly, loved wholly. We can allow our deepest selves to be open and honest with Jesus because he accepts us and makes us clean. Jesus' unexpected foot washing also shows us the truth of the equality of everyone. If we need reminding of anything, it's often this, because it's so easy to kid ourselves that we are superior in some way. But the truth is, we are all equally in need of the unquestioning love of Jesus' humble foot washing. And in being willing to do such a dirty and lowly job himself, Jesus asks us all to remember that not one of us is greater than the other. Instead, we are called to serve one another with the kind of love, humility and grace that he shows us. So here we are, with Jesus kneeling at our feet. In a minute, Jesus is going to eat his last supper with his friends. He's going to take bread, bless it, break it and share it with them. He's going to pass around the wine and ask them to remember him. He knows that they're all going to fall short. They're going to betray him, abandon him, run away from him, deny him. But Jesus washes their feet anyway. He washes them, eats with them, prays with them and loves them so fully and completely that he dies for them. Our celebration today is that we are among them too. We take part together in the drama of God's love, and we rest in the knowledge that Jesus draws us in just as we are, to be made whole and clean in his presence. Amen.
let us pray. Loving God, on this night Jesus was betrayed. He washed his disciples' feet. Tonight we hold before you all who are washing the feet of others in our hospitals, in our hospices, in our care homes, in the emergency services and supply chains, in our own homes. And we ask you, loving God, to be with them, to sustain them, protect them and all those they care for. And help us to commit ourselves to follow Jesus' example of love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Help all who follow Christ to imitate his example of love and service, reaching out to all in a spirit of generosity and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for all who are persecuted and in any kind of danger because they are people of faith. Give them courage and protect them from all evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. Loving God, we hold before you all who have died, and especially those who have suddenly died because of COVID-19, any other illness, accident, and all who are the victims of conflict. And we pray for all who are facing death this night, especially any who are on their own or frightened. Lord, be close to them, have mercy on their souls and grant them eternal peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us all the will to be the servant of others, as you are the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. The Dismissal when the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you are not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace.